Hey everybody, Mike Iaconelli back out in the shop and I've got a really, really good one for you today. And in today's shop, we're talking about a brand new bait that just launched that's changing the way we think about jig fishing. And in today's shop, we're gonna be talking about the brand new Missile Jigs Monster Jig. Monster Jig. And I said that pretty loud and excited-like because I'm excited about this jig. First things first, let me show you why we call this a monster jig. Because if you're watching this video right now, you might not really appreciate how big and large the profile is on this jig. So before we get started, I just wanna show you a little size comparison. That's the brand new missile monster jig. And that's a regular full-size jig. This one's the missile flip-out jig, which is a standard, regular, normal, full-size jig. You know, every company out there, if you go to Tackle Warehouse and you look at full-size jigs, standard full-size jigs, that's the profile you're gonna find. Look at that thing compared to the missile monster jig. It is a monster and it's a completely different animal. Um, we're gonna go through it all today in this video. The why, the where, the how, and then of course we're gonna talk about trailer selection and line rod and reel because that's important too. Um, but man, this is almost a new category of jigs, of skirted jigs. You know, for years jigs have pushed the boundaries going small, going down. And of course with missile jigs, we've got the mini flip, the, the micro football, and, of, and the micro jig, which is like that big, it's ultra finesse. So jigs have pushed the boundaries going smaller for years. And you know, now with the, with the launch of this thing, we are pushing the boundaries of jig fishing the other way. We're going bigger, larger, and this is really gonna be a tool, especially when you wanna catch big fish, okay? Especially when you wanna catch big fish. All right, let's go over the specs real quick, okay? Just to give it to you. Um, two sizes in this jig to start. We've got a one ounce and an ounce and a half, so two different jig sizes. We've got this thing in six colors. Um, you know, a few of them to imitate your tilapia and panfish and crawfish, and a few of them to imitate more of the shad species. We've even got one of these colors, guys, that imitates rainbow trout if you're um, in a place where they, they have stock trout. So two sizes, six colors, and a gaff of a hook. And honestly, I'm gonna bend the weed down, weed guard down for you guys and try to give you an appreciation for that hook. But this is a custom fit. That means this isn't a hook. We couldn't buy this hook off the street. This is a custom made 10 aught hook, 10 aught jig hook that's specifically designed for this jig, okay? Um, jig head style. You know, if you look at it, it's got that very traditional Arky style head on it, okay? Arky style jig head. I would call it kind of teardrop with a line tie that's perpendicular to the hook. And that style jig head, that Arky style jig head, in my opinion, is the most versatile jig out there. It's good around rock, it's good around wood, it's good in open water, it's decent in vegetation, right? It's, it's just a good all around head design. And you know, with that teardrop shape, not only does it get in and out of cover well, but it planes very well. It swims 
very well. And that's going to be a primary technique with this jig as we start to talk about how to fish it, okay? Um, you know, last but not least, of course, it's got the heavy-duty jig keeper trailer on it, which helps to keep those plastics up on the hook, okay? Let me talk a little bit about um, trailers now, and then we're going to talk about why. Why in the heck would you fish a jig that big? But let's start with trailers. Um, guys, on this jig, I'm gonna give you a little ratio. 80% of the time with this jig, I'm adding some sort of trailer. And I'm adding that trailer to create an even larger profile and to add a little more action on the back, whether it's swimming with a swim bait style trailer, or fluidity with a crawl or creature type trailer, right? I'm adding it to, to gain bulk and mass and length, but also to give it a little action. So 80% of the time, I want a trailer on this monster jig. But about 20% of the time, and this one's really gonna come into play when we're talking about forward facing sonar, about 20% of the time, especially when the fish are suspended, a little more picky, cleaner water, 20% of the time, I don't even fish it with a trailer. I fish it without a trailer um, and just let that skirt undulate as I'm reeling it. And we'll talk about that as I get into the presentations. But, you know, trailer styles, guys, listen, anything can play on the back of this monster jig as long as it fits the jig. So, you know, in trailers now, we're gonna be talking about bigger soft plastics on the back of that jig. Don't be afraid to look over at the saltwater plastics, the musky plastics. By the way, this jig is great for multi-species. If you're watching and you catch stripers too, you catch muskies, you catch other fish that are big, this is gonna be a player. Don't be afraid to look into saltwater and musky world but in general, I'm fishing big plastics, guys. And when I say big, from five or six inches, you know, creature style baits and crawls, um, the five inch uh, Berkeley Power Bait Pit Boss is a great one. A five inch uh, Power Hog is a great one. Big, bulky creatures and crawls, but I really, 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 really love big swim baits on the back. Um, you know, whether it's a traditional boot tail style bait, like a big power swimmer, a big Kai Tech, or the hollow belly style trailer is a great one. This is uh, the seven inch Berkeley power bait hollow belly. And when you look at this, this is a pretty big long swim bait. And I normally fish this thing on a swim bait style hook, weighted or weightless swim bait style hook. But man, when you thread it on this monster jig, it really does complete the profile of this thing. And I wanna show that to you. Great trailer on that monster jig, right? So big swim baits, big creatures, big crawls. And real quick, just as a little bonus, in testing, one of the coolest trailers I fished on it is that brand new uh, Gilly extension. And you know, that's the Shaddy. That's the Powerbait Shaddy. And of course, that's in a big size. This is a six inch size. And when you put that big Shaddy on, and I just thread it sideways. If you look at that Shaddy, it's uh, thread sideways. What a great profile on that monster jig. And that fluidity, if you, if you know about the gilly, the shaddy has that same fluid motion. It's anatomically correct. It's not only long, but wide. So great, great profile on that monster jig, okay? So 80% of the time, soft plastic trailer, big soft plastic trailer on that big jig. All right, let's get to it, guys. Why? Why the heck are we gonna fish a monster jig versus a traditional standard full-size jig. I'm gonna give you a couple reasons. 
The first one is, if you've watched my shop videos, you know I'm big on this, guys. Match the hatch. Match the hatch. And when you're fishing in a place that has bigger forage, match the hatch. 100%. And, you know, the obvious ones are big forage like gizzard shad, okay? Let me get that shaddy back. Gizzard shad. Um, big giant, and if you're in the saltwater, bunker. Um, Cisco, if you're up north. Hitch, right, if you're on the West Coast. And I mentioned it before, rainbow trout, right? Think about the size of that. It's really not that big. This might be, a, in total now, it might be a six or seven, seven or eight inch bait. That's exactly the size of the trout they're eating, right? So we're gonna use this monster jig when we're not trying to imitate little forage, when we're trying to match the hatch. By the way, this is a great one for bluegill. Um, that color skirt has a really good bluegill tone. If you're down in South Texas or Louisiana and you have tilapia, if you're in Florida, you know bass love tilapia. Guess what? Tilapia is that big, right? So we're gonna use that monster jig when we're trying to match big forage. Reason number two we're gonna use this jig is drawing power, okay? You heard that term a lot or you hear that term a lot, drawing power from big swim bait guys, right? Uh, follow your favorite swim bait fisherman and he'll talk about the lure having drawing power. And that drawing power is through movement, but it's also through size. And a big meal really is attractive to, to a bass, especially a big bass, right? He sees a million little shiners and shads swimming through the water every day. A million little bluegill, a million little crawfish every day. Once in a while, that fish, that bass will see a big forage swim by and that catches his attention. Because if he eats that, He's got a lot bigger meal there. He's got a lot more value to the energy he's expending, right? So this big jig, monster jig, has way more drawing power than that. Think about, guys, I want you to think about this jig as a big swim bait of jig fishing, okay? You know, standard size jig, a missile mini flip jig, that's a little 2.8 swim bait. That's a little tiny jerk bait of, of jig fishing. Think about the monster jig as the big swim bait of jig fishing. Let me give an example. If you think I'm crazy, you're, you're probably still watching or shaking your head like, no way, dude, you're out of your mind. There's a glide bait. This is a black talon. This is one I throw a lot. It's called a donk. Dude, it's smaller than that. And nobody would bat an eye at fishing a seven or eight or nine inch hard glide bait. Nobody would bat an eye in 2024 about throwing that. But, but they're, they're worried about fishing a big jig? Bro, it's smaller. It's smaller. Um, so think about this jig as the big swim bait of jig fishing. All right, last but not least, and then we'll get on to how to fish this jig. Last but not least is the fact that this monster jig is going to catch really big fish. Um, I grabbed another one too, just to show you. If I'm targeting big bass, if I'm after big fish, whether it's I'm trophy hunting, or I have a little limit in the boat and I need a kicker bite, right? If my purpose is to catch a big bass, I'm gonna throw a big bait. Forever and ever and ever, we've went to these big glide baits to help us in our quest to catch those big fish. But now, 
when we're targeting big fish, now we've got the ability to throw a monster jig. And guess what the difference is, guys, between these two? Where you can throw them. Where you can throw them. Think about that, right? That, I love that thing. That thing's great. It's great open water. It's great above the cover. But man, I can't swim this through standing timber. I can't skip this under a dock. I can't fish it through grass. That thing just fouls up constantly. Now I've got a big profile lure that guys, I can fish it anywhere. I'm breaking the barriers of that big swim bait with this big jig and I can fish it anywhere in the thickest of cover, just like you would the standard jig, right? Dude, if you fish a standard jig, you know, that thing ain't getting snagged. You throw that anywhere you want. Same philosophy, right? So, so big monster jig for big monster bass, okay? All right, let's get into the techniques on how to fish this jig. Um, I'm gonna give you three, but as I'm talking, let me remind you that fish this monster jig like you would the regular sander size jig, right? There's no difference besides the size. The length and the weight, the size of the jig, it's the only difference. So very versatile in where and how you can fish it. But in general, in the last year working with this bait, I found three techniques for me that are really, 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 really good, okay? Let's, let's start with maybe the bottom and, and we'll work our way up, okay? The first one is, um, a technique that I call crawling the jig, crawling the jig. And you know, it's a lot like dragging a regular full-size jig or a regular football jig. And it's almost like slow rolling that jig on the bottom. The great thing about that technique with the size of this jig is it displaces so much water and creates a rutkiss on the bottom. Is that even a word? Look that up, ruckus. It's gonna kick up a lot of stuff. So I love to just almost drag it, almost slow swim it, but I want it contacting the bottom. Remember, that big arky style head is great for coming over that stuff. So um, I'll use that drag slow roll technique. I use it a lot around um, gravel, rocky areas, um, long tapering flat points. If you're watching this video and you fish on a, a blueback herring lake, you know those long tapering red clay points, long sloping points. Dude, it kicks up a ton of debris and has drawing power. You heard me say it before, I'm gonna say it again. So technique number one for me is that slow drag or slow roll technique crashing it on the bottom. Technique number two is another technique that I use a lot on a regular full-size jig or a football jig, and it's a technique called stroking or popping the jig. And I love to make this monster jig pop off the bottom rapidly and fall back down rapidly. Pop and fall. And you know, when you do that, it looks a lot like a fish or a crawfish or a bluegill or a tilapia trying to get away, right? Or injured. And with that technique, I'm letting it fall, hit the bottom. Once it hits the bottom, I usually drag it just a little bit. And then I'm gonna use my rod and body and reel. I'm gonna use all of me if I can get my rod here, to make that jig pop, okay? So when that jig's out there, I'm gonna let it fall all the way to the bottom. You can imagine that thing, boom, hits the bottom. Once it hits the bottom, I'm down here like around three o'clock with my rod tip. And I'm actually gonna pull it up to about one or two, and then I'm gonna go back down, and then that second time I go back down, I'm gonna take my hand off of my reel. Watch this, guys, I'm not kidding. 
And as I lift up with my left hand, I'm smacking the bottom of the rod. And when I do that, that's kind of the motion it looks like. Um, like that. I'm popping up and hitting the bottom of the rod at the same time. And when I do that, guys, this, this giant monster jig is whew, rapidly coming off the bottom and then falling back down. Fish can't stand that movement. And when they see it, if they're around it, they want to go over and kill it. Once again, big profile, drawing power. So I think that rise and fall of that bait make those fish want to eat it. All right, last but not least, I want to get to probably my favorite way to fish the monster jig. And it's a little bit more of an untraditional technique with a jig. Uh, a little bit with a swim jig, but it is swimming that monster jig just basically through the water column for suspended fish. Um, man, I'm a big, big fan of those tails that really have that slow, subtle movement, whether it's a big swim bait or a shaddy or something like that. Big fan of that giant boot tail style swim bait on the back. And I'm literally swimming it through the water column where I see the fish, okay? So, you know, with today's technology, whether you like it or not, forward-facing sonar is changing things. And utilizing 2D and side imaging and down imaging and forward-facing sonar, I look out there and I can see where the bait is, I can see what level all the activity is, and I can see the fish. And when I do that, this monster jig is so good for swimming it through the level of the fish, okay? Um, also, let me just remind you that I put a trailer on it, but about 20% of the time, especially when I'm in open water, I'll fish it without a trailer, and a lot of times, if, if there's no cover, I'll actually get that fiber guard and I'll just snip it off. And then this becomes a really, really good tool to get big fish to bite it and a great hookup ratio. But just swimming it through the level of the fish, okay? Whatever level they're at. The great thing about this jig is in those two sizes, ounce and ounce and a half, you have a lot of control on, on how deep you can get that bait. So even if you're seeing fish that are 20 foot down over 40, 30 foot down over 60, very easy to get that jig to them and swim it through the level of the fish. All right, last but not least, let's talk about tackle because this is a big monster jig. It's not only a large profile, but it's heavy. Ounce, ounce and a half, it's a heavy jig. So because of that, guys, we're not gonna use don't use your regular jig rod. Do not do that. Regular jig rod for a full standard size jig for most people is seven foot to seven four, something like that, medium heavy, right? We're gonna bump up our tackle and when we're fishing this monster jig to a little bit longer and a little bit heavier action rod. So here it goes. And, and I'm just gonna give you the general specs for fishing a monster jig. 7.6 to 8 foot. So a flipping style rod or a big swim bait style rod, 7.5 foot to 8 foot heavy action rod, okay? We're going to go up to a heavy. We're not going to fish that lighter, medium heavy. We're going to use a heavy action rod. I'm in love with this one. This is a 7.10 heavy action rod, Abu Garcia rod. I love it. I've got it paired with the Revo Beast. I love it. Um, so longer, heavier rod. On the reel, just pair it with the reel that has a good solid gear ratio, right? Something, let's call it seven one to one to eight one to one. Um, the Revo Beast is a little bit oversized and I like that with the Monster Jig because it allows me to put on more heavier line than say a little compact reel that I'd be using for you know, little tiny baits, flipping little baits or whatever. 
So seven, seven, one to one, eight, one to one casting reel. Perfect. Last thing is line. And I've really experimented a lot with line guys. And I'm going to give you my breakdown and I'll call it 70, 30, 70% 70 of the time. And you could see that right there. 70% of the time I'm fishing that missile monster jig on straight fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon, literally the whole reel. 20 to, to 30 pound fluorocarbon, but my favorite is 20 pound fluorocarbon when there's no cover or sparse cover and 25 pound fluorocarbon when you start getting trees or docks or, or brush or whatever. And I'm using that Berkley Trilene 100%. Even 30 flora would be really good in certain situations. Um, so 20 to 30 pound flora, 70% of the time. The other 30, I'm using a braid to short flora leader mix. And I've done that with this monster jig when the cover is so gnarly that it's even too gnarly for 30 pound fluorocarbon. Or when I'm fishing in really sloppy cover situations, or last but not least, super dirty water where the fluorocarbon kind of won't hurt you as much, you can use it there as well. But when I'm doing that 30% of the time, it's 40 or 50 pound braid to that same 20 to 30 pound leader. And I just use a short little leader, guys. I use about a 14 to 18 inch, 14 to 20 inch leader of that heavy fluorocarbon. Um, gives me the, the best of both worlds when I'm using braid to flora. Man, I hope you enjoyed the seminar. This is exciting to me. You heard it ding because my phone knows I'm excited. Because this is really opening up a new category of skirted jig fishing. Don't be intimidated by the size of that thing. Don't be scared by the size of that jig. Look, if you don't believe me, hold it up to a big swim bait one more time. It's smaller. Don't be intimidated by this thing. Use it as a tool. And when you want drawing power, when you want a bait that matches the hatch, matches the profile of the forage, and when you want a bait that's going to get big, giant bass to bite, that's the time to throw the monster jig. I hope you enjoyed this shop. If you like what you're hearing, do me a favor, stop right now, hit that subscribe button down there. Subscribe to my channel. If you're already subscribed, tell your friends about Mike Eichner Fishing on YouTube. We're here to help you become a better angler. Have a good one. Try that jig and you're gonna catch some big bass. Bye. Hey everybody, Mike Iaconelli. I hope you enjoyed this week's In the Shop. I hope you learned a little bit. And if you like these videos, Remember, there's a whole boatload. Check out these two and you're going to learn more about bass fishing.